Today we continue in our series and we're talking about Golgotha. And uh, this morning we're dealing with a subject. We're not through with the study yet. We still have a little bit more material to cover. And today we're talking about guilty by association. Now, we're in the book of Romans chapter 3 today, and we'll be using as our text verses, verses 21 through 26. And in this continuing examination of Golgotha, we're looking at the evidence concerning who killed Jesus. Now, to begin this morning, I want to remind you that we were fashioned and we were made in the image of God. For the Genesis account, the Word of God says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. David said, We're fearfully and wonderfully made. By who? Not by uh, some type of process that uh, the world denies today the, the creative acts of God. They've come up with all types of ideas and uh, things that have absolutely no pertinence. We were made by God in His image. Now, so we were formed. We were formed in an image of beauty. And today, don't go look in the mirror. <laughs> and I'm not trying to pump you up your ego. But we were created with a purpose. And that purpose in which we were created as we were designed for God, it was for a specific purpose. Adam and Eve unfortunately chose to sin. And we in our lives have sinned. For the Word of God says, all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. And because of their sin, the Word of God tells us that a curse fell upon all humanity. Just not Adam, just not Eve, but upon all humanity. All are sinners. All have fallen short. All have missed the mark. And consequently, because of our sin, then we are doomed to live in darkness and the darkness of sin and also the darkness of suffering. Now, there's something within us, unfortunately, that causes us to resist and to even resent God. You say, preacher, I've never resisted him. Well, maybe you thought you didn't, but your sin did. And the Word of God tells us explicitly that we all have been in that position of rejection. We were born in that position of rejection. And so according to the Bible, hallelujah, listen to this. A kiss changed everything. Amen. A kiss changed everything. For in Psalm 85 and 10, the scriptures proclaim mercy and truth are met together. Amen. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Well, we know where mercy and truth come from. We also know today where righteousness and peace comes from. It all comes by what God did for us through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, at the cross. This was accomplished, this mercy, this truth, this grace, this help, this faith. Everything that we have today at our disposal came because of what Jesus did at the cross for you and I. Everything changed. When Jesus Christ hung on the cross of Calvary. Now, Jesus Christ became sin for us. Well, the Word says He knew no sin. So that we, by the process that God designed called salvation, could once again be beautiful in God's eyes. God's looking at your heart. Amen. He's not looking how pretty you look today. Amen. He's not concerned about that pretty dress or that pretty tie you've got on. There's nothing wrong with looking nice. But God's not looking today. You're not going to get to heaven on your looks or what you wear. You're going to get to heaven on Jesus and what he did for you. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad, that even though we may not be the prettiest thing on the outside, <laughs> through the blood of Jesus, we're made pretty in our hearts, in his image. Amen. So realizing this today, he literally took our place. And the Word of God in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says this, For he hath made him to be sin for us. Not only that, he says, Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Praise God. So Jesus Christ, here's your first fill-in, 
Jesus Christ became a sacrifice so that all people that call upon the Lord can be saved. We, we are here today because Jesus died. We're here today because Jesus arose. And we're here today because of that, that we can know him as our personal Savior. So we, we could die in our sins or we could die for, for our sins. Now, realizing this today, Jesus became a substitute sacrifice and he did indeed die for the sins of all mankind. So now we have the facts about who killed Jesus. And in three words, we all did. We all did. We're all guilty of the blood of Jesus. We're all guilty of his death because our sins, as the sins of all humanity, was upon him. So Jesus died. This is the good news. He died for you, and he died for me, and he died for every person. And thank God that he did. He doesn't today just come for some people. He comes for all people and he extends that salvation to every person. Now, it seems today in this modern-day church era in which we're living, they don't like to deal with the identity and the dealing with sin. Uh, the modern church thinks in terms of, well, let's have rehab instead of repentance. Well, folks, <laughs> rehab may be fine, but it won't redeem you. Uh, the problem is we're scared that we're going to offend somebody and call them a sinner. Well, you know, the Word of God says every one of us have met that qualification. We're all sinners. So realizing this today, it may be offensive, but that today is the flesh within us. Realizing today God can change that. And He does it through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The fact is, sin is real. And rehabilitation will not satisfy today the payment that it takes today uh, for repentance and a rebirth. Well, Nicodemus came to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I don't understand. You speak of you must be born again. How can a man enter into the womb of his mother the second time and re be rebirthed? Jesus said, I'm not talking about a physical birth. He said, I'm talking about a spiritual birth. Today, yes, it's evident we've all been born into this world because we're here. But you need a rebirth in your spirit. You need to give your heart to Jesus. Amen. Well, we're living in a day when seemingly Islamic terrorists threatens the very existence of Christian people. Uh, we're living in a day where Christians are being oppressed and persecuted. I respect the, the governor, what is that, of Indiana? Illinois? Illinois, I believe. And what has happened in that state and several other states that are following, I believe Arkansas being another one today, that is providing some protection for our religious rights. And uh, folks, today, we're living in a very crucial hour that we need to stand up for Christ today. We need to let people know we're Christians, and we today are not ashamed of who we belong to. Amen. In America, we're living in a day where no-fault divorce is ripping families apart. Divorce rates are higher than they've ever been in our nation. And the right to choose, you call it what you want to, I call it what the Word calls it. It's murder today of the lives of children. And so drugs and alcohol is destroying the lives of people every day. And there are many other sins and things that people are doing. The greatest missing message today, I believe, of the church today is the absence on the preaching on sin and also on the necessity of salvation. I'm not here to give you a lecture this morning. I'm not here to make you feel good in your flesh. Today I'm here to proclaim the greatest message, and this is the message of the church. This is the message that the first church preached. This is the message of the church today that should be preaching. That Jesus saves lost sinners. Amen. And so in Romans 3, we find then our sins today taking center stage. And what Christ Jesus did is even taking a sharper focus now of what he accomplished. Paul reminds us all people deserve the judgment of God. And the reason that we deserve it is because of the sins that we commit. However, the church, again, I say, is missing the message. The church may acknowledge we sin, but it's chosen today the temptations of basically three things. One, today we only try to do better. Folks, you can't do better until you get Christ in your life. Amen. It's not based on what you do. It's based on what he has done in you. Secondly, today they say, well, we obey God. Well, they're trying to keep the law. You can't keep it. You can take all the Ten Commandments, and I promise you, you have broken one of them, if not many of them. We all have. 
Today, our obedience is not what saves us. But then thirdly today, we try to keep his commandments. Well, I'm trying to keep all the rules and the regulations of the Bible. That's not the way God operates today. I believe today if you had a heart change, today you're going to desire to live for him. You're going to desire to obey him. You're going to desire to live by the principles and the precepts of his word. The, the solution is not that we stop being sinful because we can't. The fact is today the law of God cannot save us today. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law, but the word says he came to fulfill the law because it reveals sin and it cannot prevent sin. The law cannot prevent sin. So in other words, we can't be good enough today to earn God's forgiveness. Well, I'm doing the best I can. It doesn't work that way. Now, beginning in Romans 3.21, the apostle Paul reveals how we can be right with God. Here's what he says. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested or made visible, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now, when, what Paul is saying is God has shown today or provided a way that you can be right with him. And it's according to the standard that he today has declared in his word. God shows us how the day that we can be righteous today. And it's, a part, you know, and it's not today from the standpoint of trying to keep a list of rules today. It's the fact of living by the power of God's word. God never intended to save anyone based upon a person being good. There are a lot of good people that have gone to hell. They went to hell in their sin because they never received Christ. And you can't base it today on keeping the law. You can't keep it, uh, base it today on your self-righteousness today. He said the law and the prophets give witness to the fact that the righteousness of God is revealed separate from the law. So how does God then save us, Pastor? Very simply. The key is found in Romans 3 and 22. And it is faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Now, the righteousness of God comes through faith in Christ Jesus. Paul said, for by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So if you're interested in being right with God, it comes by having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what makes you right with God. Amen. And so Paul was saying, there's no difference between being righteous and having saving faith in Jesus Christ. So if you have saving faith in Christ, then God has made you righteous. Hallelujah. Get this right. Jesus died for you and me. So you cannot earn what God is willing to give you. People trying to earn, work their way to heaven. I grew up in church and I was told, work your way to heaven. You're good, outweighing your bad. Try to do good, but what do I do with my bad? Well, you hope when you get before him, stand there with your fingers crossed and hope everything is going to work out all right. Man, that's not the way God brought about salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what salvation is today. There's so many people so distorted. Well, I've been to the baptismal water. They can stake you out in water and it won't save you. <laughs> well, I, I give to the hungry and I give to the poor and I give to this charity. Well, all that is fine. But the problem is you've never given your life to Christ. And it doesn't, see, you're appeasing yourself. You're appeasing your flesh to make yourself feel good and thinking that's going to get you in the gate. It's not going to work. There's only one entry point into heaven, and that's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without the death of Jesus Christ on the cross today, godness, uh, God today, goodness rather, is out of our reach. And sinfulness then ruins and taints and tatters and tore, tears our lives. And he condemns us before a holy and a righteous God. So without the death today, you can never be the person that God wants you to be. Well, I'm working on it. You know what, folks? We've got the wrong idea. It's him doing the work in us. It's him working through us today. If you're lost, I want you to know today God loves you. And Jesus died for you on that cross. And if you're saved today, Jesus died for you to give you the righteousness of God, which changes everything about how you live. 
Your life is different. You don't live like you used to live once you get saved. Well, I just can't let low of these sins. That's it. You can't let go. It's because you have not let God take over. The only way that your sins today can be released from you, and the only way that you can get victory over your sin, is to let Christ give you the victory. It's releasing your life to Him. So, Pastor, what is a Christian then? A Christian is someone who's accepted the forgiveness of God, and then celebrating is the fact that you've become who God wants you to be. God wants you saved. God wants you blessed. God wants you living right. God wants to pour out heaven in your benefit. But today when you're not living for him and you're not living righteous and you today you're living some other lifestyle, God can't bless you in that today. Listen, being a Christian is the greatest life on the face of this earth. And it's something to celebrate. Amen. I want to ask you a question. Why did Jesus have to die for you then? Why? Well, the fact is, there are several realities pertaining to that. Let me give them to you quickly. One, Jesus had to die in order to give, you, to give something to you. Amen. The Word of God says in Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then the good news that is found in Romans 3 and 24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So what does God want to give you? Well, let me give it to you in a word. He wants to give you what is called justification. Justification? Yeah, justification is more than just forgiving and forgetting. You're justified in His presence. To be justified is to be declared that we are legally right with God because of what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. So hallelujah. We've been declared in the court of heaven as acquitted and forgiven. Amen. I am forgiven. And I'm glad not only what God, not only what God forgives, I'm glad he also forgets. No sin held against us today. So the holiness of God demands today that we be perfect, and the grace of God delivers the perfection of Jesus Christ to us. You say, well, preacher, I'm not perfect. No, we're not. We are forgiven. But you know what? That doesn't mean that you're not striving, working towards, and pushing towards the perfection of God in your life. And so you know you cannot earn a gift unless it's given by grace. And, and grace is the unmerited, undeserving favor of Almighty God. So thank God. When, what does God expect of you then? You know, we could throw this out on the table, and I'm sure I could hear everything from A to Z. But really, in, in a few words, let me give it to you in three words. What does God really expect of you and me? A willing heart. A willing heart that will surrender to Him. There's nothing today that you can contribute today to your salvation. You cannot save yourself. You cannot deliver yourself. You can't do anything. Thank God he's already done it all for us today. The only way to, to, to cross God's finish line of what we call righteousness is to trust Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Remember, you cannot earn God's favor by doing good. Good works follow salvation. Salvation does not follow good works. Amen. So therefore today, you can't acquire goodness Today, God has to give you goodness. And I'm glad he gives you. And I'm glad today, as David said in the 23rd Psalm, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell, live in, habitate in, thank God, the house of the Lord forever. Praise God. So we are not good people on our own. And so realizing this day, Jesus died that we can stand in his goodness. That when God sees us, he sees Christ in us. Amen. Now, back to 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Let me read it to you one more time. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Now today, the, the miracle of movies and the depiction and the books and the inundation of, 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 of all the things that we have today that's flooding the gate from books to CDs to DVDs to movies today... They question today the fact about Jesus, his righteousness, and that the fact that he was the sinless son of God. Let me tell you what, it doesn't make any difference what the world, the movie industry, anyone else says. He is the sinless son of God. 
And nothing can remove that today. So how you, this is how you get saved. It's, it, this is how you today can become righteous in Christ Jesus. Don't forget where you came from, friend. Amen. Uh, the Christian life is becoming what God has declared you to be. And so we need today to start acting like who we are. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. We need to start acting today and acting like what today we're supposed to be. If we're Christians, then that means Christ-like. Actions, deeds, words, your daily life. How you, just not what you're doing here. It's how you're living it out there that counts. Amen. So become who God, this is the way I like to put it, become who God has declared that you are. Amen. The, the, the goal is not improving on the righteousness of God. You can't improve on that. It, it's, it's all in resting and responding today to the righteousness of God that is placed within you today. I love Galatians 2 and 20. He says, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Folks, the Christian life is dying to who you are. And so Jesus Christ can shine through you. Amen? We need to be reflectors of the light that lives and dwells within us today. If He can save you by His grace, He also can change you by His grace. So today, you've got to submit yourself to God for God to change you. We, we look to Jesus to be saved, and we lean on Jesus to live the Christian life. Let me give you number two. Jesus died to take something from you. Wait a minute, preacher. I don't want to give up nothing. Oh, you want to give this up, I promise you. Romans 3 and 24 says, being justified by His grace through the redemption that is Christ Jesus. Now, Jesus died to take away your sins. So, we need to know the word redemption. See, these words, I don't hear them a lot. You listen to radio, you listen to television, or watch TV or whatever. You don't hear words like, you know, uh, being born again. You don't hear about confession, repentance. You don't hear about words like of redemption. Uh, it seems like the cross has been pushed out of the church today. We had a debt we couldn't pay. <laughs> he paid a debt he did not owe. And I'm glad he paid my debt and paid it in full. Ephesians 3 and 21 says we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Our problem with sin is we underestimate the holiness of God and we overestimate our goodness. So how were we redeemed? I think the best place to look is what God says. In 1 Peter 1, 18, 19, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver, gold, and from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's how you say Last Sunday morning, I preached on the blood of Jesus Christ. And folks, let me tell you, the Word of God says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There's no forgiveness. Jesus had to shed His blood to take away our sins. Our sins were nailed to the cross. Thank you, Lord. And though we, we were responsible today for His death, He then uses His death today to be to our benefit. Isn't that amazing? I mean, today, the blood of Jesus can cover, remove, extract, blot out every sin in your life. Thank you, Lord. He can take away the habit of sin. Amen. Romans 5 and 21, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. And so today, realizing this, God is not finished with you and I today. He will save you today if you'll simply look to Him. And it's very simple what you do with your sins. And, and so repent of your sins. Place them under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and move forward. Start living in the past of your sin. Yeah, but you know I used to. You're not a used to be. You now are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away, dead. All things have become new. Jesus didn't die for you to live in the past. Jesus died for you that you could live your life today and have faith and hope for tomorrow. Amen. Now, not only will Jesus save you from your sins, 
But he also will save you today from yourself. Thank God. We need to be overwhelmed by the grace of God. And let me give you the third one and I'm through. Jesus died to face something for you today. Romans 3 and 25, whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood, he declared his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. What is propitiation, Pastor? Simple. Propitia propitiation satisfies the wrath of God. Amen. Scripture reveals that we were under the wrath of God. Why? Because we were sinners. But aren't you glad he has blotted out your transgressions? And aren't you glad he's removed your iniquities? And aren't you glad everything that had you under the wrath and the judgment of God through the blood of Jesus is gone? David said it's cast as far as the east is from the west. Praise God, Jesus is our mercy seat. Amen. We escape the wrath of God through the mercy of of the Lord Jesus Christ. To be saved, Jesus has, has, has to give you his righteousness. In giving you his righteousness, that is what we know as giving you his justification. So Jesus had to take your sins. That is redemption. So by the fact that he took your sins, that is redemption, and justified you, has given you his righteousness, that means whatever was against you, Thank God you've been acquitted of it. Today, it's not held against you. It's just as if you had never committed it. That's how far it's gone from you. Amen. So realizing this today, he has taken that, and then today, Jesus has to satisfy, thirdly, the wrath of God, and that is the propitiation. It satisfies the wrath of God. Listen, everything was against us. Jesus stepped in our place, went to our cross, died our death. But if we had done all that, we would have still been in the grave. But thank God on the third day, he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Thank God he is our victory. He is our justification. He is our redemption. He is today our everything today. Jesus did all these things today so that you and I do not have to live in fear Amen. The song that we just sung a moment ago, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Because He Lives, all fear is gone. Praise God. If you need to be saved, let me tell you something today. God does not hate you. God gave His Son to face wrath for you today. So what can we do? The fact is, uh, what more could he do? Well, what we can do is, is get saved. And what he did, he died on the cross. There's nothing to add to it. And let me tell, say something else while I'm on that. If he saved you, I'm here to tell you today on the authority, not because I said so, but because he said so. He has the authority to keep you. You don't have to run to an altar and get saved every Sunday. When you gave your heart and your life to Jesus and you meant business with God, he meant business in saving you. He's not a God that takes back what he gives to you. And if he is giving you his salvation, you are just as safe and secure for heaven as if you were already walking on a street of gold right now. Amen. I believe that if he has the power to save me, he has the power to keep me. Amen. Thank God he did it all. Paid it all. Accomplished it all. And now he is providing it all for you and I today. I close with the lyrics just simply to a little song. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. Here's the good news. Do you know what it is? Say it with me. But he washed it white as snow. That's why you're here this morning. Because we've got something to celebrate. We've got a God who loves us. We've got a Jesus who died for us. And we've got today the Lord who redeems us. And we've got a God who walks with us. And we've got a Lord today who's coming for us. Man, it can't get any better. You're a child of the King. You're already on the winning side. Your victory has already been delivered. You're complete in Christ. And one day, one day, and could it be today? 
Well, preacher, there's no clouds in the sky. Jesus doesn't need anything big to come back on. Amen. Folks, one day he's coming again. Amen. Amen. One golden daybreak, Jesus will come. All your troubles of this life will be over. All your sorrows, all your days of pain and difficulty, all, everything that you've suffered in this life won't even be a memory in that place. Tell me today, getting saved is not the best thing that can happen to you. And it's all because of what Jesus did at Golgotha. He died that I and you could have life. Let's give him a praise for that this morning. Amen. As we close in prayer today and we prepare for worship, we're glad to see Smokey and Brenda here, here, present and accounted for. Brenda must have combed his hair and patted him down and put a tie on him and got him looking pretty this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I see he's got his twin back there with him. Amen. He and John Heiner. Lord have mercy. And tonight we're going to have the, the third of the trio. We're going to have Robbie with us. John's brother's going to be with us and sing during our... I hadn't told you that, had I? But he's going to be here tonight and be a part and sing in our... Worthy of the Crown presentation, he and his brother John. So uh, we're looking forward to a good time. Thank you for being in God's house today. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you today for your great goodness and mercy that you extend towards us. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for the blessed promise that we have that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Maybe there's someone here today, Lord, that doesn't know you as their Savior. And I invite them right now. In this place, at this moment, they can change and have ownership changed in their life. They can come to the Lord and receive you as their personal Savior. Lord, right now, touch their heart and show them that need and help them to pray that prayer with me and mean it from their heart right now, right here. Dear God in heaven, in Jesus' name, I'm a sinner in need of your salvation. As I've heard this morning, and as the word declares, that if I will come to you with my sin and my rejection, you will forgive me, you will save me, and you will make me your child. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I claim this day, as my day of salvation. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, thank you. If someone prayed that prayer, they've got reason to rejoice today on this Easter Sunday. They are now a part of the family of God. Heaven is their home. God is their Father. Jesus is their Savior. And thank God they've got victory in you. I just pray now that you will mightily use us through this day. Bless the music that is to follow. Brother Smokey, Brenda, bless the service. And we just pray for an outpouring of your spirit in this place to a magnitude that will be overwhelm us in the presence of a mighty and wonderful God. To God be the glory. Just before you close your eyes, open your eyes and lift your head, if you just ask the Lord into your life, I would never do anything to humiliate you or hurt you or embarrass you. But I want you to know that I care for you and I want to pray for you. And I'd like to pray for you in the days ahead that God will gently and tenderly guide you and bless you in his will and his work. You say, Carlton, I did ask Jesus into my life a moment ago, and I did pray that prayer. I'm going to ask you to do one simple thing. I'm just going to ask you to slip your hand up and slip it back down. Anyone this morning? Carlton, I prayed that prayer a moment ago, and I asked the Lord into my life. I'm claiming today is my day of being a child of God. Anyone? Just slip your hand up and slip it back down. Anyone this morning? Well, bless your heart. Thank you, Father, for what our hearts have received, what today we have heard from your word. Guide and direct us and keep us in your perfect will and bless us in Jesus' name. And all God's servants say it. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord one more big clap. Come on, you can give him a little bit better than that. Amen.